I didn't make an emotional reaction about Trev last night because I'm a big believer in the fact that there's always two sides to the story. From our perspective, the Nebraska fan perspective, Trev leaving looks slimy. It felt like a move that would crush a program that's already been neglected and disrespected by those in charge for years. And after finally finding the right guy with real love for Nebraska, nobody could have seen it coming. I thought maybe today we'd learn more about the internal issues that pushed him away, or we'd find out he was going to be paid more than any other AD in the country, but we didn't learn anything new. He didn't make a statement to fans. He just sent an email to the staff to let him know it was bad timing and that he was gone. Maybe he left because of the basketball lawsuit, or maybe he was frustrated that he felt like he was the only leader in the room since there hasn't been a president for seven months now. But no matter what the reason was, he burned a place that bent over backwards for him. He burned a bridge with a fan base that supported him as a player and as the AD. A fan base that came out and supported for eight games after Frost got fired and who showed up to set a world record at a volleyball game. He forced Nebraska to change his reporting structure. They doubled his salary to be one of the top paid ADs in the Big Ten. And even though the big four sports at Nebraska are all trending up, he abandoned multiple projects that he started. I'm all for doing what's best for you, but I wish he'd just tell us what more he can accomplish at A&M that he couldn't in Lincoln. He had his hands on a $450 million stadium renovation. Matt rules on fire and Trev was the one who went out and got him. Did he feel like he needed to be at a different school to boost his resume for a bigger job? Does he want to be the commissioner of the SEC in the future, or maybe even the commissioner of college football if we get to that point? Again, I know nothing because the one guy who should be transparent about what changed over the last few months won't keep it real. He knows that everybody associated with Nebraska is furious, but he's still trying to play the good guy game by keeping shit friendly on Twitter, which I don't understand. But I don't want to get hung up on Trev Alberts, and I don't want to beat a dead horse because we all feel the same way. And I'm sure Matt Rule does too, even though he's way too savvy to ever show his cards. But imagine you're him, hired to a school you've got zero ties to, by two men you're excited to work with. But after only one season, both those guys who sold you the dream, who told you how green the grass was here, both said f*** it and left for other schools with more resources. It's really easy to get upset about things that you can't change, but it's not logical. We get over emotional about nonsense like players who transfer, coaches who leave for more money, or administration who leaves because they want to climb the ladder, but none of those are constants. The only constant variables at Nebraska are tied to us, literally us, you and I, the fan base, the overwhelming support when a team might not deserve it. The willingness to shell out money for shitty on-field products or donate when we're asked to in hopes that whatever temporary leadership's in place makes the most of what we can afford to give. The culture that we've built, and when I say we, I mean everybody who's ever been a diehard Nebraska fan. You can take away the star players and you can lose key pieces on a staff, but you can never take away the foundation or the heart of a program. Matt Rule knows that and he loves it. It's why he came to Nebraska in the first place. Of course, he wanted to work with other passionate people who were on the same mission, but them leaving doesn't change his course. He came to Lincoln for a reason, and now that he's on his own with pretty much free reign to do whatever he believes is right for his team, there's new opportunity here. Navigating a rebuild's tough enough as it is, but take away the president and the athletic director who brought you in and who had a clear plan of action for the future, and we're talking about the chance to prove that you can lead at the highest level. There's no boss right now. I mean, there's a temporary one, but rules on an island. He's leading on his own. He doesn't need an athletic department to help him tap into what makes Nebraska special. He knows how to reach us on his own. You can take the woe is me route and complain that Nebraska keeps losing their best guys, or you can look reality in the face and say, the foundation has already been laid. I've never met Matt Rule, but I think he and I are a lot alike. So when I imagine how I'd feel if I was in his position, there's part of a quote that comes to mind. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. And Maybe I'm wrong and he bounces out before the job's complete just like the man who hired him did. But ever since Matt Rule came to Lincoln, he's shown a love for this program that we hadn't seen from a head football coach in years. And for my own sanity, I'm going to choose to believe that that love's real. 
I lost some of my audio, so I got to re-record this part. And I cannot miss it because I think Matt Rule's most important opportunity has to do with leadership. I think it has to do with him being the CEO of obviously the football program, but being the face of what leadership should look like at Nebraska. You had Trev Alberts, who we all know did a very good job. You had Ted Carter, who also was doing good things before he left for Ohio State. You go back before that, though, and you had Bill Moose, who didn't live up to the expectations, was kind of tapped out. Obviously, athletic directors of the past, head coaches of the past, who didn't live up to the billing of what you'd expect from a leader at the University of Nebraska. Now, Matt Rule has shown time and time again, obviously at other schools, and he started to in Lincoln, that he can be the face of leadership and he can start to show us what should be expected. What's the standard of leadership at the University of Nebraska? The opportunity is so big because now there are some big shoes to fill because there's no one out there who's going to play that leadership role better than I think Matt Rule can and then he will. That guy is the face of the athletic program at this point. Matt Rule is the face of Nebraska because obviously the sports are what people look to. So Matt Rule's opportunity is to lead in the right way and to give us an idea of what the expectations should be for our leadership going forward. I think Matt rules up for the challenge and I think he's going to make us all proud. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comments below. Will Matt rule answer the call and finish what he started? Or are you worried that he's going to bounce out since he's got no more ties and he'll be gone sooner than later? Are we going to find out why Trev left for A&M? Or do you think he leaves without ever explaining what went wrong in these last few months? And if you had to make the call, do you keep Trev's name up on Memorial Stadium or is it time to take that one down? Honestly, I don't care what he did as a player. If I was in charge, I'm ripping that off tomorrow. But that's all I've got for today. So until next time, thank you for being here and I will see you in the next one. Go Big Red.